Did you have a good time in the boat race? No, I didn't. I never got my boat into the water. The swans all chased me away. They said it was a swans only race. Say, have you talked to Billy and Stacy yet? No, not yet. Schemer, could you roll over, please? Well, they'll find out anyway, just like what happened to James. Who's James? Surely you remember James. He's a bright red engine. He thinks he's the best and brightest on the island of Sodor. Let me explain. <laughs> James is a mixed traffic engine. He can pull both freight cars and coaches. He's proud of his smart red paint, and so is his driver. Everyone says you brighten up their day, James. One morning, James whistled loudly at the other engines. Look at me. I am the smartest, most useful engine on the line. Rubbish, replied Thomas. We're all useful. Sir Topham Hatt says so. He's head of the whole railway. You know what, James? Added Percy. What? Replied James. You're getting all puffed up. James huffed away. Later, he was still boasting. I'm the pride of the line. I saw you pulling freight cars, snorted Gordon. You're only a goods engine. I pull coaches, too. Not as much as I do. But Sir Topham Hatt has plans for me. James was only making this up, but Gordon believed him. What plan? Uh, wait and see. Oh, dear, he thought. Now what'll I do? Thomas was shunting shining new coaches. Good morning, James. Are those coaches for me? Asked James, hopefully. No, these are for Gordon's Express. I'll fetch your freight cars next. But James was going to play a trick on the other engines. Actually, Thomas, I'm taking the coaches. Sir Topham had asked me to tell you. What about the cars? asked Thomas. Uh, give them to Gordon. Come on, Thomas, said his driver. Orders are orders. So when James's driver returned, James was coupled to the coaches and he puffed away. Thomas returned with the freight cars. And a few minutes later, Gordon arrived. Where's the express? Thomas told him about James. And so here are your cars. Gordon was very cross, and so was his driver. Wait till Sir Topham Hatt hears about this. Meanwhile, James was enjoying himself enormously. What a clever plan! What a clever plan! He chuffed. Then he saw Sir Topham Hatt. Some jokes are funny, but not this one, James. You have caused confusion. Yes, sir, said James. You will now stay in your shed until you are wanted. The other engines teased James. I wonder who'll be pulling the express today, said Gordon. I expect it'll be you, replied Henry. James is stuck in the shed for being silly. James felt sad. Next morning, he went back to work. Hello, whistled Thomas. Good to see you out and about again. I'm sorry I tricked you, said James. Are these my cars? Yes, replied Thomas kindly. They are pleased to have you back. James set off to the harbor with his train of freight cars. He bustled about all day, pushing and pulling them into place. Time to go home now, James, said his driver at last. No cars or passengers, just we two. But his driver was wrong. Excuse me, called a man. I have a meeting with Sir Topham Hatt, and I mustn't be late. May I ride back with you? Of course, replied James's driver. Then he whispered to James, This gentleman is a railway inspector. James was most impressed. He steamed along the line as smoothly and quickly as he could. Sir Topham Hatt was waiting on the platform, and the railway inspector greeted him warmly. This clever engine gave me a splendid ride. You must be proud of him. 
Yes, indeed. Once again, you are a really useful engine. So you see, everything worked out for James. And it can work out for you to... 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 Mr. Two Feathers, I hope I'm not too late. I haven't missed you, have I? Missed what, Mr. King? The Sunset Flyer isn't in yet. Have any famous people arrived? Sorry, Mr. King. Sunset Flyer's not arrived until tomorrow. You told us yourself. Not two hours ago, I left a message with your new assistant station manager, Mr. Dan Jones. Assistant station manager? Dan Jones? This fella here is Dan Jones. You're the assistant station manager? Dan, Kara, what is this all about? Well, Aunt Stinky, you see, Carol and I were playing a game, and we were pretending we had real jobs, and then Becky came in. Now, who in the name of diesel fuel is Becky? Uh, Mr. King, uh, no harm done, really. I mean, everything is all right. Everything is under control. Oh. You call that being under control? What, may I ask, is the meaning of this? Uh, do be a love and scratch my foot, won't you? Ah, uh, hello, J.B. Ah, Mr. J.B. King, Esquire. Ah, uh, exalted head. Ah, uh, the meaning of this, yes. Ah, uh, ah, uh, yes. The meaning of this is that it is a managerial retreat. Yes, it's uh, especially restful for important business type people like yourself and I. Put a sock in it, schemer! Miss Jones! Yes, Mr. King. The only thing under control in this station is my temper. We were just pretending like you would play Felix puts on. Oh, Dan, you have to understand there's a big difference between acting on stage and pretending in real life. I just wanted Becky to think I was your assistant. Oh, does she? Yeah, I told her she could have a big party here at the station. Well, you're gonna have to tell her the party is off. No, boy, she's gonna really hate us. Oh, no, 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 she won't hate you. No, I think she likes you and Kara because you're, you're a friend. You know, not because you have big, important jobs at the station. I'm sorry, Aunt Stacy. You know what your problem is, Danny boy? You know what? You're too good an actor. I was gonna tell you, Billy, but I wanted to work it out myself like a real grown-up engineer would. Hmm. What a real grown-up engineer would do when he's in trouble, or she's in trouble, is tell the truth and ask for help and fast. I remember one time I went out one cold, bitter winter night to throw the switch for the Highball Express. But I couldn't. I was stuck, frozen. And I wired head office, and they told me the engineers were having trouble all up the line. It wasn't just me. They told me to stack some hot coals around the switch and thaw it out. And I could hear the, the thunder of the Highball Express rolling through the valley. I knew I didn't have much time. But those red hot coals, they worked like a charm, and just in time, too, because that highball express came rolling around that bend and rolled right on through here, right on schedule. So you see, if I hadn't asked for help, there'd have been an accident. Wow. Speaking of schedule, shouldn't my assistant engineer be getting home for dinner? Thanks, Philly. Saying I could use the station, but I'm not really having a party. I just said that about all my friends because, well, I just came over to play with you guys, and you had these jobs and everything. Becky, we don't have those jobs. It's true. We were just pretending. Sorry, Becky. We were just acting, you know. Well, I believed you, and we believed you. But the party. Listen. Sunset Flyer. So, was the actor I was expecting arrive on the train today? Uh, he's talking about my co-star. Oh. It's a part that I was born to play. Uh, tell me about my character again. 
Well, your character's name is McDonald. McDonald. And uh, he has a farm. I got a farm. Uh, your co-star's here. Let me go get her. Oh, good. Oh, who are those flowers for, Mr. King? Well, as superintendent of the Indian Valley Railroad, I felt it was my official duty to welcome our famous visitor. Oh, that's great. Beautiful. Miss Keener, meet your co-star. <laughs> Well, I must say, she presents a uh, splendid profile. Mm -hmm. I like that in a performing pig. Felix, could we be in your new place? That would be excellent. But it takes talent, you know. You have to be able to convince your audience you are what you're pretending to be. Oh, I think we're all pretty good at that. <laughs> all right, so uh, I'm going to play the part of a farmer named McDonald, and you're going to play the part of a pig. You think you can handle that? All right. I'll start. E I E I O. Come on, work with me now. Reach for the speed, reach for the whistle, go where the rail may run. Reach for the words, reach for the story, follow the rainbow sun. And station where dreams can come true. Waiting there for you. So much to see, so far to travel, so much to learn to know. Friends by your side, hopes to hold on to, who knows how far you'll go. To a shining time station, where dreams can come true. Your own imagination. Waiting there for you. Funding for this program was provided in part by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the financial support of viewers like you.